welcome to Primal Basic number three, the bow drill, and also to the Prometheus segment of this section. So uh, we've got a lot to go over. Uh, we got a lot more clarification uh, to do on these pieces. Now we're going up our scale of more pieces, less effort. Okay, so, uh, and with these uh, more devices that we're adding on, they come with them upgrade complications. So, uh, all of these devices, these pieces, these parts, are essential, meaning that uh, they're, they're very vital in that you can't have less to make them work. You need these, these five. And specifically, I'm talking about the bow, the cord, uh, our new device called the pressure hand brace, and we have our famous uh, spindle and base. Okay. So from the spindle and the base, we're adding three. So we're replacing the pressure mouth brace with a pressure hand brace, and from the mouth bow drill, we have our our bow and like I said earlier we're going to detail about explaining these uh, about the bow and the cord and the tension and everything like that so the real change here is the hand brace the pressure hand brace um, but we'll get into that so uh, one of the other things I want to clarify is I want to uh, give you another definition to add to your other ones and that is principal that uh, Principal factors. A principal factor is when I'm making a uh, clarification of a individual quality of a variable. So when I start to go over a variable and I'm making a specific point about it, that's a principal factor. But when we go over the 22 variables again, because we're adding a lot to those um, those points. Uh, I'll clarify that further. Okay. One of the other things too is is that in our later in our uh, art of the variation section, uh, I'm going to be introducing some variations of the bow drill method uh, called the Egyptian drill, the crutch drill, and the giant drill. All of them very interesting to see. Um, a lot of fun. On top of that so you'll really like them but this is the uh, Promethei se segment so we're going to um, clarify our our if only question because we have to start with our our need okay and uh, figuring out how this method uh, came to be what it is today in its evolution and its adaptation from our uh, ancestors. So, in seeing the mouth bow drill, okay, we see that we've actually freed up one hand. Okay, so we went from the mouth toggle drill, where our the mouth and our two hands are busy doing something. We go to this incredible discovery of the bow and the cord together to apply energy transference to the method. And what that does is, when you think about it, it frees up a hand. So now our if only questions kind of become from the mouth bow drill. Uh, how can I add much more pressure and If only I didn't have to hold the board with my hand. So is there another way I can hold the base? So, and with that comes the, the method, or the technique of the, of the bow drill. Because the base goes underfoot, and the pressure hand brace is just that. You are able to apply a whole lot of pressure with your hand, while all of your energy transference happens with the bow. And again, um, this is a unilateral 
um, pressure going to the side of the spindle. So again, we have to be very careful. So there's an important emphasis on that, so which we'll clarify further. All right. So if only we can add more pressure, and if only I didn't have to just use my hand to hold the base in regards to the, the mouth, um, mouth bow drill. So here we are at the, at the bow drill method itself. Now this is uh, the Promethei segment. So just as a reminder, as our skill increases and therefore our awareness increases, uh, we want our awareness to go from after to during to before. So we want to be like our hero of myth and legend, Prometheus. And uh, we want to be able to do things with forethought, with preparation, because lives are on the line and uh, everything has to be very well thought through. And that's what the primary function and purpose of this skill and these devices are, are for, is to save lives. All right, and here we go. On to science of the basic form. All right, so I want to give you a basic preview of how the method goes uh, before I get into a more detailed clarification of everything. And uh, so in our equation, everything's going from right to left, okay, in that sense. So we're going to look at the structure. And what we do is you work through the variables to understand that so you can help understand its function. All right. So that's how we, uh, that's the direction we go in order to gain an understanding of something, to get a clarification of something. So uh, I want to put inside your head uh, a visualization of exactly what it is that I'm trying to do, that I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, you could see the structure in your head as we go through the method, um, as I get into more clarification of things. So basically, we're, uh, you're going to see what it is that we're doing so that you can gain understanding of how it happens and then an understanding of why. So what plus how should equal why, like I said before with our, uh, in our earlier version of the equation. So uh, our devices are five devices, okay? Uh, always starts with what I call the core two devices. And the core two uh, are always the male and the female. So there's only, in all of the drill devices, the most basic one has only the core two devices, and that's the spindle and the, uh, the base, right? So the male and the female. But uh, the only other versions of the uh, friction fire methods that have the core two devices, male and female, are the linear methods. And that's the fire plow, fire saw, and fire thong, which we're going to go over later when we're done with all the drill variations. All right. So uh, just to clarify that, that the, the spindle and the base are always the core two. And then we have our three new devices. And now I'm going to get into showing you a preview of the method. And then I'm going to go over how to uh, make each device, especially if you don't have access readily to natural materials out in the wilderness. And uh, take it from there, and I'll show you all my sets that I have on a basic level. All right, let's go.
Alright, so in doing your basic method, you have your five pieces ready, okay, your five devices, they're all set to go. Uh, this set happens to be out of Atlantic White Cedar, the base, the spindle, even the pressure hand brace is uh, Atlantic White Cedar, which uh, by the way you, get at a, you can get at a hardware store, some hardware stores I guess, especially in the fencing section. Uh, fence posts made out of cedar, uh, untreated, by the way, remember that chemical variable. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my shoes off. Okay, And one of the reasons is, while I'm on the ground, I'm on this table, the table is very hard, I always take one of my shoes and I put that under my knee to help save my knee. Okay. Now, the other one I'm just going to put aside. Actually, that's going to go like that. Now, first thing we have to do is make these pieces. Okay. Now, if you remember, back in a, in a day, the top part, uh, I want to, just like with the mouth drill, the top part is kind of a pencil point. All right. It's a longer point than the bottom one. The bottom one is a medium shall, uh, or shallow point, okay? Now, this spindle happens to be um, about a little over three quarters of an inch in thickness, I'd say. Why don't we get our roller? Double check that. Yep, it's three quarters of an inch in diameter. Now, it doesn't have to be this thick. In fact, your first one shouldn't be this thick, as a matter of fact, but this is the one that we are happen to be using uh, for this example. Now, I've already taken the divot out of our base, okay, and again, it's measured back from the base, all right, away from the edge. Our handhold, our pressure hand brace already has uh, the divot carved out to receive the top of the, the brace end, remember that, the brace end and the base end, the brace end of the spindle, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna go over cord tension and things like that, but your cord wraps around once on your bow, okay? And the string, you notice the spindle is on the outside of the string, okay? It's not on the inside of the string, it's on the outside of the string. And this is very important for your stroke length. You will get a longer stroke if the spindle is on the outside than it is trapped on the inside of the bow. But I'm gonna go over that more too. Now again, I have to get into a stable, kind of triangular type position. So I have my foot up here, okay? My knee is resting here in the shoe. Now my foot, the base, actually sits literally perpendicular on the bottom of my foot, if you could see. Perpendicular, exactly in the middle and underneath. And it's about an inch away from the divot, where my instep is here. I mean the uh, inside of my foot near the ankle okay now the shallow part the base end was in the divot there the brace end receives the pressure hand brace now if you could see this the pressure hand brace sits flat in the palm okay you're basically just grabbing all the way around it kind of like a an eagle claw Okay, in uh, Kung Fu terms, I guess. And uh, your thumb, the back of your thumb here, okay, wraps around your, just above your ankle, around your shin bones, both bones, okay? And your arm is somewhat straight. Lift my sleeve there. And your arm is entirely braced up against your leg. Your 
Your arm is literally braced up against my, the whole of my forearm sits up against all of my shin. All of my shin, right there, shin bone. Now, what I do now is I put just a little bit of my body weight, my arm is actually straight, it's hard to see now, but my arm is actually straight, the elbow is not bent. And this way, my body weight goes in a straight line, like in that straw principle, down to the spindle, okay, and therefore down to the base to add pressure. And I'm going to go over this again, but the first thing we have to do is make this set together because it's not made it together. So we start off with some slow strokes to make sure that our axis is good. It's nice and straight. See our spindle is, is spinning nice and straight. And what I'm going to do is increase the speed and therefore I'm also going to increase pressure by leaning, by, remember that technique of sliding, I'm leaning more pressure onto my arm, which is straight, and braced up against my leg. Okay. So both the brace end and the base end are burning. They're both smoking. Now you have to be careful of your fingertips here, that your fingertips aren't getting too close to where the brace end is, is burning, is mating. going nice and now both are well made okay the base end as you can see is rounded off now which is what happens the brace end has mated with the pressure hand brace here and you can see we got a good ring of, of powder from that, and we can save that. So now, of course, the next thing we have to do is put a notch in there and grease our brace end with the pressure hand brace, and we're going to light this up. Okay. All right, so we've made it our pieces, okay, and I put a notch in our base, now I want you to notice that I've put the notch toward me, okay? So when I'm bowing and my foot is on this base, okay, the notch is toward me because actually this is the direction where I see the notch. Now in the mouth drill, I had it on the outside because my eyes were on the outside, okay? But here in this case, the way that I am positioned here with my knee back here in this kind of kneeling position, uh, my eyes are actually behind the spindle this way. So I want the notch to be here where I can see it fill. Now you could have it in the front, you can have it in other places, but for the basic form, I want you to have your notch facing you so that you can look at it. Okay, now I flattened the base end of my spindle a little bit, not a lot, but just enough to take the uh, sphering off. Okay, I'm going to put my knee in my shoe again. Okay, now our coal transfer piece here is uh, a piece of card. I'm going to give that to my daughter when I'm done here because she wants to blow the tinder bundle into flame. Okay. Now we get into position again. The base is again perpendicular in the middle of my foot. Okay. About one inch from the hole itself. Okay. And again the spindle is on the outside of the string. The brace end is up and the base end is down get into position my thumb and my arm the back of my thumb and my arm are locked against my the shin part of my leg okay and we're going to start off slow 
And you can see that's well mated because it doesn't come out of the hole. See that? I start spinning and it doesn't come off the base. That means that it is well mated. Okay? And I've got a very good view of the notch back here, which is why it's there. Now the thing is too, is you have to be careful about the carving of your notch. Um, that it's not too wide because of this unilateral force Which we're going to go over again now. I'm actually pulling toward the notch Okay, so you have to have your carvings have to be very excellent in that Your hole is still holding your spindle Inside and not going into the notch or burning into the notch okay? like we've seen multiple past times right with my fails Okay so we're starting off slow. You see the smoke starting. I can see the notch filling with, with the coal dust. So it's getting warmed up. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure by sliding forward. Not that you can actually see that. But I'm gonna go a little bit more speed, more rotations, more speed. Going good. Okay, so let's see what we got. Oop. We got us a coal. Be very careful. I've got extra dust around the edge, around the rim, which happens a lot. So we'll add that there for more fuel. Now my daughter's going to come on over. And nope, come on over. Open it up. Open it up. Nice and big. Come here. Okay. And we're going to put the whole thing in there. All right, so we're talking about spindles. Now, uh, I had just got done showing you the Atlantic White Cedar bow drill um, basic form. And this is the spindle from that set. And like we said, it's uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter. Okay, We have the obvious brace end and the base end, which is uh, has some spearing as I call it. Okay. Now if I were to use this again obviously I would flatten that down after it was mated. But uh, in talking about the the bow drill method in itself uh, many people will say that this is one of the easiest to get a coal with to get a fire with and I would have to really agree with that but to say that it's not challenging is not true. It will definitely challenge you. And if you really want to master uh, friction fire keeping, this is definitely one of the most important methods that you have to learn and all its devices, all of its parts. So, but right now we're talking about the spindle and we're gonna go over the principal factors of the variables that make up spindles. Now this is a bag of Atlantic white cedar spindles. Okay. Now, some are carved out of actually uh, fence posts. But this one you'll notice, obviously, which still has bark on it, came from a branch of an actual cedar that came from southern Jersey in the Pine Barrens area. Okay. And it looks very, very straight, doesn't it? But Again, one of the important factors here being that it needs to uh, have a straight an axis as possible. Here's the one we used earlier, right? Oh, that's, sorry. This is the one we used earlier. And its axis should be very, very straight. Okay, let's roll it and see. That looks really good, right? Okay. And this is our branch that came off a tree. 
and that looks really really good just needs a little cleaning up but it is definitely has it definitely has a very good straight axis now one of the reasons why this method exists is because of the natural cylinders uh, that you get from branches on trees but the thing with them is that with uh, with working with trees your uh, wood density is a little harder okay so we need more pressure henceforth uh, the need for more pressure with the pressure hand brace which is how the method uh, evolved and came to be so let's go over some of these measurements now one of the best measurements you can have is basically going from the tip of your little finger to the tip of your thumb okay and on me that's eight inches approximately now another average could be from the tip of your thumb to the base of your palm here near your wrist and for me that's about six inches okay now the height is necessary okay because your string on your bow needs to be able to ride up and down here okay it has to have a little bit of space to be able to ride up and down because you you definitely have to keep your bow level and as I'll discuss later uh, depending on what kind of cordage you have if you have store-bought cordage you can keep your string straight like this which means that it can rub up against itself but when you have natural cordage and I'm going to go over this again later you cannot have the string rub up against itself so you have to hold the bow and therefore the cord at an angle and you're going to need more height for the string to be able to ride up and down this spindle so height is really a very key factor All right. now I have a shorter spindle which is about five inches and the only real way I can really use that is if I have a store-bought cordage because I can keep the bow level and the string does not have to really ride up and down the height of the spindle okay so another important point okay is def the definite stability of the spindle itself now again we're dealing with the unilateral force of the bow going back and forth on this piece of wood right so one of the really important aspects of uh, selecting your material is the grain the grain as you can see here runs through both poles it's nice and straight and it doesn't run out the grain doesn't actually cut across which are weak points and can break um, uh, ruin the stability of your spindle so when you're selecting actual wood make sure that your grain is actually running from north to south throughout the whole thing throughout the poles okay now if you're working with plant material which we're going to go over later then it'll just be obvious because you're working with the whole stalk with the whole stem um, this is why branches are really nice because you don't have to worry at all as to where the grain is the grain literally is straight through all the concentric rings are uh, you can see they're all lined up and everything goes right through so there's definitely no run out of the grain so there's no weak points within the branch but when you're carving pieces of wood grain is very important so keep that in mind all right uh diameter size which is surface area okay that's a, a concern now back in a day right i had you pick up these uh, different size dowels from the hardware store and here are a couple sizes uh, but first I'm going to mention if you remember our um, piece of bamboo our bamboo spindles our bamboo chopsticks are 10 millimeters in diameter okay this is what I think is really going to be the absolute minimum of a spindle okay when it comes to bow drills um, even if, if this was like a, a hollow plant stalk you're definitely pushing it but again you have to follow the principles 
it's always not necessarily what the material is don't get hung up on names of materials what's more important is the principles that you're following density uh, stability axis Okay, you can use it. <laughs> My daughter just took that from me. Um, but you can go uh, anywhere upwards into what I think is one inch. Okay, here's one inch in diameter. So here we have your, your seven eighths, your three quarters. Your five eighths and your your half inch, okay. Half inch and five eighths is actually a really good size. Now the problem with getting bigger, bigger isn't always better in this instance, because you're dealing with more surface area. The more surface area you have, the more pressure you're going to have to apply, and really. In a way that's kind of unnecessary so you want to keep things balanced between the mean that we want in order to keep things working okay so that's very important again we're working with these unilateral force of the bow all right so we want to avoid that take ori problem of the breaking the bamboo kind of thing where uh, you destroy the stability of your spindle. Usually with wood, that's usually not a problem unless you're dealing with something really low density like yuccas. And a lot of times the yuccas have uh, insect holes in them. So there are weaknesses, so you have to be very careful. Again, it's the principles that matter, not always uh, the name of the material that you're working with. Okay. So surface area is an issue, uh, which means diameter is an issue. Okay your axis, your straightness, your stability, so the grain is running through, there's no run out, okay? It's not gonna have a tacker only problem. You must have enough height, which means you must have enough space for your cordage to be able to run up and down the spindle. Give yourself some space, okay? Always make sure you are uh, have well identified your brace end and your base end okay so you don't mix those two up um, but you'll you'll figure that out after a while um, so basically your spindle has to be a little stronger a little thicker and a little shorter than your mouth drill spindle okay and uh, you're going to see a whole lot of examples of these but the first example i'm going to show you is a uh, sample of poplar, which is uh, lumber. I got it from the hardware store. Okay, and these sections of poplar came in uh, sections that are three quarters of an inch thick. Okay, I cut them in pieces that are uh, an inch and a half wide. Okay. And this will be my base. All right. Now, this one that I'm working with, you can see that the the grain runs nicely straight through this. There's no real run out on this. But I had used this previously. As you can see, I hollowed it just a little bit to get this one to work. You can see I burned right through to the to the bottom of the of this base here. So we're going to start a new one. Now, just for example, say two, um, I don't want to, just because I don't feel like it, really, um, point this one up to mate this together. So I took a divot out. We're going to mate this one together, okay? Um, again, I like to have, uh, and this is really just my thing, I like to have the whole complete set of the same material. That's really not necessary um, for the pressure hand brace to be the same material, but that's just a quirk of mine. So I have a piece of poplar here, which is going to be the handhold. I have to mate this together because I used a different handhold earlier for this one. So we're going to watch me mate this together. 
and then we're going to get a coal going. Okay? All right. So, we're going to mate together this poplar spindle and this poplar base. And we're also going to mate together uh, the brace end of the spindle to the pressure hand brace. All right. And again, we're using store bought cordage for this example. We'll get into natural cordage soon. Again, the board, the base, is perpendicular with my foot, okay, across. And it's about an inch or so from the edge of the divot to the edge of my foot, okay. And my leg is in right angles. So my ankle is at a right angle. My knee is at a right angle, okay. My knee in the back is also at a right angle, except my foot back here is up because I like to be on my toes when I'm doing this. To me, that's more stable for me, but you may choose to lay your instep down like this instead of having your, your toes, okay? So we have our, our brace end up, our base end down, okay? The spindle is on the outside of the string. Right. Our fingers are going to be away from the divot in the pressure hand brace. We're going to have the inside here of our wrist near our thumb up against our shin and the rest of my forearm which is straight and not bent wrapped kind of wrapped around but it's straight against the straight the straightness of my leg okay of the shin so my shin my leg acts kind of as a pillar from which I can brace my arm all of this surface area of my arm up against my leg so it doesn't go anywhere and I keep it straight not bent because if I want to apply pressure the pressure doesn't go out my elbow okay with my straight arm it goes straight down onto the spindle and onto the base, okay? So let's make this together. Go nice and slow, warm it up. That looks very straight, right? The spindle. Now remember, both sides are gonna be burning, so watch your fingers. Use the whole bow. All of that cordage to get good strokes. Let that mate together. Try to keep the bow level, at least at this point, at this stage. Okay, I'd say that's very well mated. Okay, so our Pressure hand brace and our brace end is mated. Now the, you can see when you look on your spindle, okay, that the burn marks go up to and a little over the edge of the cylinder. Okay, that means it's well mated. That means that this is not going to go anywhere. Okay. If it was on the surface, it would slide around like this. But since it's well mated, it's locked in there. That is something that's well mated. Okay? So I'm going to throw my notch in. Like I said before, I want the notch facing me for the basic form. So I'm going to go do that. Grease up the pressure hand brace with the brace end. And let's light this up. Alright, so we've gotten this mated together. I put a notch in, okay, the notch is facing toward me, okay, I'm going to lay it down. Our cold transfer device is a piece of birch bark, okay, I'm lay that down. I've greased the pressure hand brace with the brace end already uh, with linseed oil, okay, again your oil of choice, your lubricant of choice. Now the bottom 
Um, it was still a little hollowed out from earlier, so uh, as to reduce the surface area, as you can see. But I did flatten it. I took off this spearing, as you can see, but it still had hollow in it. So, because I really wanted to, because three quarters of an inch is actually quite of a lot of surface area, especially for someone small like me. I'm five foot six, and I don't want to have to bear down a whole lot of pressure. So, how can you bear down? How can you re actually reduce your need for more pressure? Well, you could reduce the surface area, okay? Because we're working with a harder density spindle now. Harder density um, base and a harder density spindle. So we have to keep things balanced within the mean. That's really what we're trying to do. Some people will call this cheating, but I, I, I severely disagree. Because it's all about getting the, uh, the coal and the fire for your tribe. So you have to know how to keep things within balance. Um, to keep things uh, round and sphered and just try to get it that way, just because uh, out of ego or whatever that kind of thing, that doesn't make any sense at all. So really we want to keep things within balance. Okay. There's really no, no point to it. So. Some people will, might even say they ha it has to be that way just because just because and not have any actually other good reason as to why except that's the way it's always been done again we're really concerned with the spindle here we're talking about the spindle so this one happens to be about seven inches okay in length there would be plenty of um, ability for the string to ride up and down if it was a natural cordage which we didn't want to rub together but not in this instance um, we have nice strong cordage. We don't have to worry about it rubbing together, at least for now. And uh, it's nice and straight. The grain runs straight through. We're not going to have that take odi problem of it breaking. The axis is not is straight. It's not bent. So we don't have to worry about it actually catching and staying in one direction. Uh, I think that I'm going to show you next a spindle that is actually bent and what happens to the string uh, when you try to bow with a bent spindle okay but first let's light this up okay again I'm in my form my the back of my thumb near my wrist is locked against my shin okay my fingers are still away from the bottom of the brace end in case it heats up my foot is a maybe a little less than an inch in this case away from the mated hole it's going to get hot there so I'm going to back my foot up actually that's where all the heat is going to be concentrated now my arm is straight but locked up against the my leg which acts as a stable pillar okay and again if I want to add pressure I basically just lean forward a little bit that's all I need to do I don't need to push down with my arm I need to keep this straight and just rock forward a little bit. And it's, it's so subtle you wouldn't even notice, but I rock forward. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to warm it up. Now when you flatten your spindle, it's always a little difficult to start at first. Because in a way it needs to remate. But once you get it started, it should be smooth sail. Okay. I got a good view of my notch. My spindle seems to be just the way we want it balanced. Some good speed, some good rotations, not too much pressure, just enough. Now my notch is pretty high, so it takes a while to fill. And let's see what we got. Okay. 
You got an excellent size coal there. So here are some examples of some natural bases. Here is a uh, cedar, a um, piece of sapling or very large branch. Okay, it's a, just a little bit flattened on the back, but on top it's really flattened in order to be able to uh, receive the spindle for mating. And you can see there's just enough of that material here on the sides. Uh, this is really cutting it short right here, but it was effective. And uh, you should have really more space, as much as possible, surrounding your positive space. More, the more negative space, the better. Um, here's a piece of sassafras, which uh, is really still pretty hard and uh, didn't get a coal out of these. Um, so they didn't, uh, there's no burn marks in the notch to kind of show that there was a coal had actually formed there. And you can see that the spindles that were used here were hollowed because they have the reverse um, dead center sitting in there as you can see. So a little bit flattened on the back for stability, flattened on the top to be able to help mate a little bit, and uh, it's a natural branch. Here is a branch of what I think is, which I think it's cedar, a little branch of cedar. And uh, this one got dangerously close to a, a knot right there. Um, that's a change in the hardness, so you have to be careful. In looking at your base, that's another aspect, that there isn't a change in the hardness of density through something like a knot, all right? Because, you, and that will also affect uh, drift. See, uh, it may be uh, pushing your uh, positive space, your, your hole over, and may make it drift a little bit. So you have to be really careful. Again, this branch is flattened just for a little bit of stability and on top to be able to start the mating. Uh, here we have a piece of oak, actually. And this is really uh, oak that has been sitting out for a long time. So it's really light. It's really degraded. It's, uh, its density and its hardness is really not what you think it is. It's really, really light. And... Uh, and there you go, flattened on right here on the base just a little bit uh, on the bottom and on top to receive that. And here we have another one, another branch, flattened a little bit on top and on the bottom. Okay, a little close to a knot there. Always keep that in mind. Know where your knots are so you're not severely affecting your, your efforts. This one's uh, a branch that has been flattened. It is also cedar. You can see the, the bark on there is, is cedar bark, some kind of evergreen. And I believe it's cedar. And this one has knots in it. And whoever did this, um, because I found this um, board lying around, um, they put their hole away from the knots, as you should. And here we have, I think, a branch of maple. It's been flattened on the bottom for stability. And this is a trough experiment, which didn't go off, but as you could see, um, was effective in holding the spindle and getting some burn right there. So, all right, some examples of some natural bases. All right, let's keep going. All right, so we're talking about bases now, uh, the female part of the uh, two core devices. All right, now when working with the bow drill, you need a little bit of a thicker board than you would probably use than a hand drill or a mount drill. This board of Western Red Cedar, which again is gotten at the uh, hardware store, uh, this one happens to be 5 eighths of an inch as an exact measurement. Now probably at the store it probably says something like uh, 3 quarters of an inch, but in actuality it's, it's 5 eighths. Um, sometimes the pieces that you actually buy are a little smaller than uh, what it actually says it is. In fact, uh, the other day, I picked up more bamboo chopsticks, and as it turns out, they are now, a uh, the ones that I picked up, aren't actually exactly 10 millimeters anymore. 
um, it's actually less than 10 millimeters. So, because uh, I put it through my gauge, and uh, in doing a test, and it turns out that they're not exactly uh, 10 millimeters. It's actually, if you could see, it's actually less less than 10 millimeters. In fact, it's uh, it's barely three eighths now. So, uh, is it the world economy? I don't know, but everybody's everything's getting smaller in materials. So. Here I have one of the older chopsticks that I bought, and this one is right on the money, uh, 10 millimeters. But the ones that I bought, obviously, are actually even less than 3 eighths of an inch here, as you can see. So it's Cavier Emptor. Let the buyer beware, all right? Because I had mentioned earlier that the ones that you would buy would be 10 millimeters, but... Uh, even I uh, assumed that it was going to be 10 millimeters, the ones that I bought, and they're actually smaller. So, which means that one of my devices doesn't work very well because it completely relies on it being exactly 10 millimeters. So I'm going to have to finagle that. But anyway, uh, so this board is a little higher than what would be used for a mount drill or a hand drill. And uh, so, Actually, a good size is actually between 5 eighths and 3 quarters tall. Um, anything taller than that, I would definitely recommend that you fill the notch with coal extender. Okay. This board happens to be 2.5 inches uh, wide and 8.5 inches long. Those are approximate measurements. What really matters is that you have enough surface area for your foot to rest on it to keep it stable. All right, and you have enough surface area lengthwise so that you have space on both sides of the spindle. Okay, so in this instance, we're going to call the hole and where the spindle goes a positive space. Okay, and I'm going to call the rest of this surface area that you see on this board negative space. All right, which is kind of a uh, what I use as a, a tracking term when I'm doing uh, tracking, uh, like uh, footprint tracking. So it's important to have this like negative space around to uh, hold the spindle in place. And when you're working with a bow drill, you can get a lot of drift. And you have to be very wary of that. So you, de you need more space, more of this negative space around the positive space of where you're actually drilling okay at most of the time and you may want to when you're drilling your spindle actually have it set back a little farther than you normally would for a hand drill or mouth drill you are working with larger pieces you should hopefully have more space to be able to work with here more of this surface area so set it back a little bit the other thing that does too is your notch um, you have to be careful of drift into your notch. If you're actually too close to the edge, if you're drilling and you're actually too close to your edge here, you, this will burn right into the notch. Because okay, then it'll consider your notch too wide. You're not going to have material surrounding the hole to support it to prevent that drift. Okay, That's a very key issue. You have to have enough space around it to support it. If there's no support, it's going to drift. So back up your spindle a little bit, more than usual, okay? Which is what we're going to do here. We're going to back it up uh, a little beyond a quarter of an inch because we're going to mate this together, the Western Red Cedar. I have my pressure hand brace, which again is also of the same material. This is already mated, so we're really just going to be mating the bottom. All right. Uh, you'll notice my spindle is probably a little shorter. In fact, it's less, it's five inches, as you can see. But I don't have to worry about riding the cord up and down because I have the store bought cordage. Okay, again, the spindle's on the outside of the string. We're gonna mate this to the board. Okay. 
Again, the board is solidly under my foot. All right, it's at a very good height. I probably won't need coal extender to add to the notch. Okay. Again, my thumb, the back of my thumb is braced up against my leg, which acts as a pillar. I'm in a triangular position, nice and stable. Now, I'm not putting on a lot of pressure, so I'm not sliding forward. I'm just holding it in place. And now that I think it's starting to mate, I'll add a little bit more pressure and slide forward. And that looks like it's mating really well. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, it's sphered out a little bit. I'm gonna flatten that off. I'm gonna carve a notch and we're gonna light this up. Okay. All right, so we put a notch in our Western Red Cedar board. As you can see, it's uh, trapezoidal does not go all the way to the center of the mated circle okay, of the hole. And uh, it's a fairly comfortable board, I'll tell you that because it sits, sits well under the foot. Again, it's perpendicular. Again, it's about an inch away from your foot. Because trust me, if your foot gets too close to this hole, you burn the instep of your hole. Um, where I used to work, uh, one of the instructors, uh, she used to teach bow drill, and she used to do everything barefoot. And the inside of her uh, foot was always brown from being smoked um, from the bow drill all the time. And uh, that was one of her uh, the admirable qualities, I'm going to say. So, we're going to get all set up. Again, the spindle is a little shorter than we would like, but it's functional because we don't have to worry about it riding. Um, again, our board is five eighths of an inch tall. We don't have to worry about uh, filling it with um, coal extender. I'm going to use this card as a coal catcher. It's, it's really good to use a, a coal transfer um, device. Um, either a piece of bark or uh, you know a little bit of uh, cardboard or you know a sliver of wood like we're using before something under there because everything the coal touches is going to get singed and burned and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you right now from on a personal level my wife doesn't like that when she finds burn marks everywhere it's like uh, living with a person that smokes and their cigarette burns everywhere so you don't want to do that. You always want to have something like this underneath here, okay? So this is why I keep everything to my workshop area, to my he dojo where I don't have to, I got burn marks everywhere all over my table, but I don't have to worry about that. But everywhere else you should. You shouldn't have those everywhere else. All right, so let's get this warmed up. Again, I'm in all my, my right angles. Okay, my ankle, my knee, my arm is straight, it's locked against my leg, my back knee, and my foot are at right angles. Okay. By the way, I flattened the spindle a little bit, because it was sphering, right? And we want to reduce that dead space surface area that's in the center. My notch, again, is toward me, and I can eyeball it very well. The other thing too is I didn't mention is that my knee is directly behind if you could see my toes and my heel make a line right and my knee falls exactly behind that line so toes heel knee which means that the bow can slide through this space this is why space is important it slides through the space and it even goes right past my knee so my knee is not in the way. See that? It goes right past my knee. So you can't be in your own way, which is another martial arts concept, principle. 
you can't be in your own way when you're trying to do a technique. So you have to have plenty of space. So again, we're, we're applying that from our dojo experience. Okay. So let's warm this up. Now I'm gonna slide forward, give it a little bit more pressure, give a little bit more speed. So we're gonna have more rotations by using the length of the bow. Okay. And we got a good pull form there. So we're gonna carefully grab the spindle with the cord like that so it doesn't flip out and move it away to the side. Okay. We've got a good call in there. Carefully lift your foot. The thing is, is that the more you teach something, the more these little things come up, which are very important. So. Throw that dust on there. Okay. There's our call. Western red cedar, excellent wood. Again, don't get hung up on names. Don't just get hung up too on types of wood because it's the, the um, variables that really matter. Density, axis, okay, especially hardness. And uh, chemical makeup, moisture, it's these things that really matter. Even though it might be a good name quote unquote, of a wood to use, you still have to test it to see if it follows, um, if it's balanced within the mean, okay? So, our base is a perfect height, did not need coal extender um, to raise up the height uh, to, to catch all the fuel, and uh, so but you'll be seeing more examples again soon now. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to go over is uh, our pressure hand brace, okay, and the things that make that up. All right, next thing.